What's up everyone, welcome to another episode of Redstone Fundamentals. In this episode we are going to talk about a less common item, but one that you can still use in your redstone contraptions and that is the lectern. Let's just get right into it. To craft a lectern, uh, all you need is a bookshelf and three wood slabs like this, and that will craft you one lectern. You can find the lectern naturally generated in the world. You can find them in pretty much any village. As long as that village has a librarian, you will find a lectern. All right. So let's just get into the details about how this works. So in order for a lectern to be used in your redstone contraptions, you actually need to add a book and quill onto the lectern. Otherwise, no redstone signal will be produced. Now, there's a couple different ways you can read the redstone signal coming from the lectern. One way that we will show first is with a comparator. So the way that this works is there's actually a, an algorithm, I guess, that Minecraft uses to determine how much of a signal to produce. Now, if a book and quill that you place onto the lectern has only one page, it will send off automatically a 15, a full strength redstone signal. If there is any more than two, than one page, so even two pages, for example, then by default, when you put the book and quill on, it will be open to page one as it is now, and it will send off one signal strength. Okay, page one, unless it has only one page, page one will always send off one signal strength. If it, the book only has two pages, then once you flip the book to page two, it will give off a full signal strength. Uh, if you were to divide that book into three pages or four pages or up to 15 pages, it will do the math so that when you flip on page one, it will give you one signal strength. And when you flip on the last page, it will give you a full 15 strength uh, redstone signal and anything in between, it just tries to divide somewhat evenly. So we'll take a look at the book that I have on here now. So this has five pages. So roughly we will get with every flip of a page, we will get an additional three signal strengths. So if I flip to page two, we now have a signal strength of four. If we flip to page three, we have a signal strength of eight. I do believe it does add another four. Um, because the math isn't quite perfect on this one. If we flip to page four though, it only adds three. So I think it's adding because on page one, there's only one signal strength. Um, I know in all of your heads, you're doing, you know, 15 divided by five pages is three, but on page one, it was only giving off one signal strength. So it needs to give that extra two remaining signal strength within the last four pages. So anyways, now we're at signal strength of 11. So we have 15, 14, 13, 12, 11. And then when you flip to page five, that will finally give you the full 15 signal strength. If we have a book that has 15 pages, then when you flip one page at a time, it will produce one extra signal strength at a time. So depending on what you want to use this for, if you want it to open a secret passageway by flipping to a certain page in your book, um, ideally, if you really wanted it to be a secret passageway, you would not only have this on a certain page, but you would need some kind of a second um, trigger that it would use an AND gate, which I talk about in my other videos, and I'll link a card up in the corner here. Uh, where you would, that way if someone does come into your base, they can't just flip through the 15 pages you have in your book and, you know, find the page that opens the door. They need to also find something else in your uh, base that also needs to be either a, a lever flipped to a certain position or another lectern put at another certain page number to give you the proper signals to then open the door. All right, the other way you can use a lectern with the book and quill to send a redstone signal is without a comparator and just using redstone dust. So the way that this works, and it's very different than with a comparator. So this all depends on how you want your redstone to behave. So the way it behaves, if you already notice, there's already a difference. This is the same book. It has five pages. It's flipped open to page number one, and you already notice that there's no 
signal strength. With the comparator, there was a signal strength of one, but in this case, there is none. How this works is that with, if you don't have a comparator, any page flip in the book will result in a one tick pulse at a full 15 signal strength. Uh, and it's only one tick, so it's a very quick pulse, and it's you'll see that it's quick enough that the sticky pistons uh, retract before they can actually pull the wool back down. So that is one thing to note, is that even though these are sticky pistons, they did not retract the wool. So again, depending on what you're wanting your redstone contraption to do, the pulse may be too fast uh, to do what it is that you want it to do, unless that is exactly what you want. Uh, in this case, all we would have to do is flip the page again to send that pulse, and in this case, they can pull the wool back. But that's the biggest difference. If you want more control over uh, the length of the signal coming out of the lectern or the, um, the signal strength, like not just how long the signal stays on, but also the signal strength. You know, if you want 15 signal strength or eight, or you want to be able to customize it and have different outcomes depending on what page you flip on, then you're going to want to use the comparator. While we're talking about how the dust and the comparators work with the lecterns, one thing that I noticed while I was testing this out was that redstone dust will pick up a uh, the pulse or the page flip, I guess, from the lectern, even if the dust is below the, the lectern. And you'll see that here where you can see that the redstone still does pulse. However, that is not the case when you flip the page in the lectern. If you turn pages, the comparator does not see any redstone signal coming from the uh, book and quill or the lectern if it's placed below the lectern, it must be placed behind it. So one way that I have actually just realized uh, that you can delay the pulse to make it last a little bit longer is by using a repeater and putting the repeater on any uh, anything other than the initial um, state. If you just extend that, then whenever you flip a page, it will actually uh, extend the length of that pulse instead of it being a one tick pulse, uh, you can make it a four tick pulse. All right, one thing I did want to mention uh, is that the redstone dust and the comparator are not the only two devices that can detect a signal from the lectern. Obviously, repeaters can, note blocks, note blocks can as well. Although if you place the note block behind the lectern, it doesn't uh, act normal. If you flip the page, it gives like monotone notes. They don't seem to change at all. I think I broke it. However, if you place a lectern below a note block, you will get bass notes compared to regular notes. You can also use a observer to detect the flip of a page, but it will do the exact same thing that the lectern is already doing, and it will send off a one tick pulse. And finally, you can also use pistons. And very similar to what I was demonstrating earlier, that because it is a one tick pulse, you can use the lectern and the flip of a page for something like this, where because of how quick the pulse is, the piston will extend and retract too quickly to pull the redstone block back. So you can actually use this as kind of like a lever uh, where you can turn on or off a light or some other contraption, open a door, whatever you want with the flip of a page. And that is honestly everything I know about Lectern and how it interacts with Redstone. Obviously, there's other cool things you can do with the Lectern, which I won't get into today. I just wanted to touch base on what it does with Redstone and how you can use it, especially when it comes to keeping things secret and safe in your base. Uh, I think a lectern is a very fantastic way to go about it. Anyways, guys, if I missed anything, please let me know down in the comments. And if you learned something, also let me know down in the comments. All right, guys, if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. Uh, hit the little bell icon so you can be notified when I post more videos just like this one and better. Uh, and if you liked the episode, feel free to smash that like button. Anyways, guys, I love you and I will see you in the next episode.